Hello and welcome everyone to another Let's Play with the Developers episode. My name is Raycams. I'm one of the main developers of Mind Colonies, and I'm here with Sam Letters, one of our Mind Colony de developer celebrities, with his own <laughs> only celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're here on our neat little Patreon server. We've used the last episode to set up a bunch of the, those rail lines. Um, although we're going to probably mention that a little bit during the episode. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So this is the Patreon server. And as always, I have forgotten to turn on the video at the right moment. <laughs> Hi John, hi Superminix, hi Ninja and Mimi, hi Greg, hi Deadville Haunting, hi Mizen and Chef, uh, hi Andros and hi Roz, how are you guys doing? Um, so to answer John's question, no, you can't port 116 worlds over. Uh, 115 worlds over to 116. That doesn't work, unfortunately. Um, that is because 116 adds all those new changes in regards to dimensions. So we do need the new dimension ID. And since we usually like to make a clean cut so that we can remove old compatibility code and these kinds of things, you will need a new world for 116. See this that it gives you always the chance for a new start. Um, for example, we've been working on this colony for what two months now? I think uh, something around this, and this year is pretty getting pretty close to finished, and we're doing an hour a week here. And it is still already getting finished pretty quickly, so I think sometimes we have to let go. <laughs> Besides that, there are always the issues if you don't have exactly the same mods, it causes a bunch of uh, issues. Um, similarly, even if you have the same mods, Forge won't guarantee it working a hundred percent because there can always be some very specific things so it is usually better to start new because even if it works to a certain degree it is really easy for this to cause issues there we go there we go mm. I'm wondering if I need another ramp off around here that's maybe better okay. I'm going to do, do another ramp off here so yeah because here's the hospital so that is will be a popular location <laughs> if there's good is or not it is going to be a popular Uh, Sam said he is going to work on that this weekend, so is there any progress on that yet? On, on what? On the pack? Oh no, want to do that tomorrow. But I searched out quite a few mods already which could be added and such. Yeah, that, that's what I meant mainly, like checking out mods etc. I'm going to upgrade that these, too. I um, found two mods which add, add different biomes, which is better than nothing. It's better than nothing. And there, but bio, biomes are plenty and such aren't updated yet. Yes. How? What is the name of that mod? It, no, that's the wrong... I think you mean the cave mod, the better young caves or so. 
I think it's, wait, let me check that out quickly. I have their server in the list somewhere here of discords. It's like Potion Studios. Mm, how how is that mod? Wait a second. It's not uh, all the biomes you will go. Yeah, that's the one I. Found. That's the one. Okay. I think it's the only only big one for one sixteen. Yes. With more biomes. Um. I found some nice backpack mod where you can configure how where you got like different tiers and you can can configure how much each can can carry actually. Mm, that's pretty neat. Yeah. Um You do not have to break the rails at, at junctions, but what is it is going it's much more efficient. It's because if he has to go down there, He's going to continue running until around here, then notice, oh, I passed my exit, and then you're going to jump off and walk all the way down, while a short jump off here is going to cost him almost nothing. Here, he's running. We're going to see him here. Did you see this? He just jumped over to the next line, basically. So that is not a problem. Mm, yeah, we don't need quirk. Mm, yeah, if we wanted to spend the extra resources, yeah, I'm not sure either if how quirk is going. Because Quark needs a bunch of inventory stuff as well. I don't think it's that eh, inventory stuff. I mean, I don't remember seeing it in any sixteen two lists. Eh, it's because Quark needs a bunch of uh, world gen stuff, which is probably why it's not updated yet. Right, we have a few places here that are definitely missing. Um, some Pinnacles. pillars so that things don't look like they're mid-air. I mean, it, it's space for us, so <laughs> they are floating is okay. <laughs> yeah, in this regard, yes, but in, in some cases it looks just weird. Like, yeah. if it has an en oh, so something that looks like an engine, then it's fine if it floats. Some people say we will eat some, but maybe it was full. Um, redstone torches everywhere. So, and then we can put those here. Them. Hey. That doesn't look bad. I wouldn't put a cor uh, a ramp down at every corner. I think that is excessive. But I think like that should be fairly well distributed. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we are missing are the uh, sections on the on the top right, like behind the tavern, etc. Yeah. Um, do I have still sandstone with me? Nope. I'm gonna get, I gotta get some sandstone at the ware- sand at, at least some sand at the warehouse. And then we can make a path up there as well. Uh, where's the egg? Here. Then sand. Yeah, we don't have a lot of sandstone. Sand here. Oh. Not a lot of sand in this one. Sand. Maybe we should get our crusher to make some bevel or so what our stone mason needs for sandstone. Choo -choo -choo. Add a, 
it's going to he's going to do that on request anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. Dupe, sandstone. Duping here. Then here we want cut sandstone and slabs. Great. Hi, Fair Wolf. How are you doing? <laughs> John used to play a lot of rail games. Um, yeah. So. Raven needs a, a sleep break to avoid her uh, colony ta being taken apart. Seems so. I mean, you can fight raids in, in at night as well. Yeah, it's just much more. It's much more of a pain because the got additional mobs. You got additional mobs, right? Um. Here, I think that looks pretty nice, like a junction like this. But then we have to go up. Um, that's again. I think that's going to look pretty neat. I think that is a pretty nice idea. I did take the regular sandstone. I think in this case it even makes sense. Um, here, the next one. Chuk, 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 chuk. I think this does look pretty nice. Then can you? Put some rails over this bridge I made upwards. Yeah. Champy. So we gotta get up here. Um. Then we're going to want this higher still. Um. More. Chip chip chip. And the last one. Chest, chest perfectly sized to fit over our wall. <laughs> But can't traders then go over our wall as well? Yeah, now the problem, it, that's exactly what I'm wondering about. How we can prevent raiders from using our... Yeah, first of all, um, they don't take rails. That is yeah. uh, one less thing to worry about, but still... Can our citizens take rails through a one block space? Um, for a limited nah, demo, passing. no pathing would stop. Yes, pathing would stop. Um, the only thing we can I thinking because I got no collision. The only thing we could do, and I think that's maybe a nice idea. The door. We make like an underground rail station up here. So we we go over here, and then we lead it in an underground tunnel, and from the tunnel, 
then you would have like a few doors with an for the exit. Yeah, I can do that as well. Um, do you so I'm just out of sandstone again. Just going to take my shovel quickly and. I do have some. Do you have some? Yeah. Sandstone. Okay, that should be almost enough. Chuk chuk. Ouch. Yes, that's you'll get quite a few of them. Okay. Then that's like here. So chuk chum. Then we want to kinda go around this. And make sure that it's not so easy to enter this. Uh, where the remaining sl I have the slabs. Okay, choo choo choo. Um, we're going to need some. I want some sandstone walls around this probably. Hi, Tinty Tots. How are you doing? Um, sandstone walls. It's only seven. Okay, that's a bit disappointing. Yeah, definitely much more sandstone than this. Uh, however, I can dig already a little bit deeper. And make pr like a station around here. So it goes down. Um, second, so the next one is here, 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 and I think then we are fine. So we can put this around the curve here. Yes. Can I place in here? Okay. So, I think that is fine. We just need Sam letters as well to fix that up. Uh, the, the rails, I mean. Then we need more. We did. I got 50 grades left. I'm not sure if that's enough. 50? 15. Yeah, 15. Yeah, that might probably not be enough. I also do need much more sandstone for this. He's he's he upgraded temporarily to Sam rails from Sam ladders. Yes. He he got an internal promotion, you could say. Hmm. You definitely need much better protection around this part. The rails are just horizontal letters, exactly. That's exactly his area of expertise, if you ask me. Okay, I'm going to just suck up a bunch of this sand here. And to make sandstone quickly. It's almost quicker than running to the warehouse anyway. Um. Come all to me. Magnetic tool. So. Yay, university, 33%. 33%? There's even a chance we're going to yeah. get this to 40% this episode, right? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Um, 
Yeah, but it th there is a bunch of percent that's just rescanning, etc. So we might actually have a decent progress on that. Um, I want a bunch of walls. Okay, 60 walls. That should do the job. So since they don't, the, the barbs, they don't get any pathing bonuses from from taking rails, they should um, not care about them theoretically. Unas? Uh, the, the raiders don't get any pathing bonuses. I can know they should. They shouldn't, yes. No, they shouldn't. Um, so we go down here. And then down here we can just make this a restricted entry area. So that should, should work. Ah, now. Ouch. What? A researcher died? Impossible. Don't we have guard station there? We had one, yes. We had one? That one must have been slacking yeah, off like, then. Well, maybe our university is just too big as well. It, it is pretty big. From its size. The amount of rooms you like you need like five guards <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until the guard arrives there that could take some time I do agree on that tum oh to so then we go up here and so guards uh, aren't, aren't reacting at the moment when so when they are sleeping. Also. Ah, yes, I saw that in your pull request. Yeah, it is. Um, so that they wake up when someone calls for you. Yes, thanks for rem reminding me that I did um, remove the light of this entire area here. Um, okay, that is lightened up again. Now, I just need some wood for a bunch of doors. Chukuchum. Yeah, our custom doors aren't finished yet. Yeah, our custom doors are not finished yet. I, th I think uh, Ott made one nice door model for which Carson I wanted to get some nice textures and he wanted to make a model himself as well. Jim to Jim. Um yes, not sure if you guys saw on the Patreon Discord the spoiler that soon you're going to have a nice raid bar to show you the progress of the raid. And as far as I know, he's also in general work. Uh, Sam Letters is in general working on making the raiders more predictable. Yeah, I mean working on the balancing at the moment on the balancing at the moment so that if you are not as good in defending against them um, those will be so a quick thing I found today so any schematics creators or even players if you see that you s if you see your citizens getting stuck on doors check the door state you can see here on the right side of the of the screen that it says open falls. So that means it's closed. Um, if the door is closed and it says open falls, you're good. If you do something like this, I'm going to show you that in a second. If you do something like this and you place the door like this first against the wall, and then you open it, then it says open true. 
Now, as you might think, if it says open true, the citizen thinks he can't pass through it, which he can't. And there is no way to avoid this. So, if you place doors and schematics, make sure you place them straight like this. Because else that's going to be a huge pain for the citizen to walk through. I did find that today, like I was debugging the new random path, no not debugging, testing the new random pathing on 116. And then I was like, oh, why, why isn't door pathing working anymore? I didn't touch that. So I debugged it and checked and I was like, this door is wrong. And what at the at least wooden level five guard tower has that broken. So I have three doors here. So I don't think that a barbarian is going to care about that then. I'm a bit worried about barbarians trying to break through this here and then going up on the rail. But they shouldn't. TM. They might, but they shouldn't. I mean, up on the rails, they are like easy targets for our rangers. Yeah. Um, and yes, the, the raid bar is going to be similar to the pillager raids, as far as I know. Yeah, it's a vanilla raid bar. Um, and that's going to be pretty neat. Wait. But I made it without the weird wave thingy, the pillager raids. Um... With the pillager raids, you have the bar, which fills up like six, seven times till the raid is over. Oh, not a nice progress bar there. So it's not it's not a progress bar at all. You just know for the current wave. Yeah. How how can Mojang do this? Everything they touch sucks, kinda. <laughs> how can they do this? At least the, the bar itself works nicely. <laughs> but yeah, basically anything where game design decisions are involved. It sucks. Yes, always when game design decisions are game design decisions are involved, kind of sucks. I don't know if Notch, his decisions were kind of better anywhere. I don't know, but I think that from I the beginning, <laughs> it's because he mostly set up the base game, where there are not that many game design decisions yet. Then, although a lot of the code is probably not code and that is pretty bad already too. Um, yeah, but I mean, the thing is that the team didn't change after not selling it as far as I know. I only, I did only think I think that Microsoft added was probably like, ah, let's get this, um, bedrock stuff um make a bunch of money on consoles and and the market system and these kinds of things but not the minecraft game itself i did like completely being completely honest i we did i uh, or at least i did think a few times already about why not just making an open source minecraft clone yeah like, it's not Minecraft, but it's a, a voxel game, right? There is no... Yeah, I mean, there are some clones out there. There are already some clones out there. Um, there are already open source clones out there, too. However, I have heard some complaints about the restrictions on them. Like, their teams are not much better than Forge. In, in terms of niceness, I mean. I know that, like, I'm 100% sure that the Forge coders are 100 times more capable than the uh, Mojang coders, that is for sure. Um, do we have a few more rails? 19? Yeah, drop them there. Thanks. Um, but yeah, yeah, open source is 
Uh, how do I say this? Quite often, quite the shithole. <laughs> um, I heard of, of a guy saying he he is like of the security part of some Linux stuff, and then he uh, like, and then he want he made a security patch for kernel, right? And the kernel people sent him death threats. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, I, I hear stories from like Linux kernel people. That's it's so like funny. it's because Linux kernel people they're like absolute like absolutists and like only kernel people are allowed to touch kernel stuff. And like that's not how open source works, you know? Yeah. Uh, even though there was a lot of reforms in the last years, especially in the Linux kernel, in the Linux stuff, where the, um, I think they had a new female lead um, that was kind of cleaning up them, and all the people had to, s and a lot of and people had to sign kind of some clauses when contributing to keep. It's uh, similar to the to some rules we have set up as well on our github and the community only had to agree to clauses to not discriminate people um, to treat people nicely etc and that caused I think it was around 30% of the people to drop out <laughs> because they were like what we have to be nice since what other people. To add to people? Not really. <laughs> I'm not even nice to my mother. How am I going to be supposed to be nice to people? They don't even know. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, that intersect. We have an inter a ramp down here. Do you mean another ramp here? We have a ramp here. I think we have everywhere some ramps. Or do we want... I'm not sure what, which one you meant. South? South. Here we have a ramp. And that's near the citizen huts. Where else did you want to ramp down? Here, but we have already a ramp over there towards the fishermen. That's north. Ah, here, yes, that's probably a good idea. But where am I? Maybe better here. I'm going to ramp off. Yeah, probably a good idea. I did dump all my... yeah, let me get some of that stone... sandstone again at the warehouse. But yeah, open source can be super toxic. Although with all the triage stuff, the forge people tried to contain it a bit. Uh, it is, I think, to working to a certain degree. Uh, just ha having Lex handle code and everyone else handling people. But yeah, it... Yeah. It's because computer scientists are usually like... computer scientists, they're not people people. And that makes it often difficult it's like Mark Zuckerberg. It's like... Yeah. A not very great human being, let's say that. But he would be a, he would be a great robot. <laughs> he would make a great robot. But unfortunately he's a kind of sh a shitty human being. Maybe he's the founder of Skynet later. <laughs> if anyone was was going to found Skynet, it would be Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. 
I saw a core response to the question how secure is open source there was it's secure because we are that good at judging people they're really good at judging people yes <laughs> they judge a lot <laughs> it, it doesn't mean that their judgments are very accurate <laughs> more than actual coding but yeah <laughs> yeah uh, facebook doesn't know me because i don't have facebook fortunately i do have whatsapp i kind of feel bad about that but at least it's end to end as far as i know wouldn't trust <laughs> but yeah I'm not really trusting it if I could get my family over to signal that would be great um, but yeah my parents have telegram apparently but I'm not a fan of telegram because that's where all the loon loons are Like when someone said something was posted in a telegram group, you know, you know, it's going to be either racist or <laughs> absolutely crazy conspiracy theory. I didn't even know that there are public telegram groups. There are what? <laughs> I didn't even know that there are some like this kind of telegram groups. You can just join us. Oh no, there's like a enormous ton of yeah, toxic, racist, homophobic, misogynist, um, conspiracy, anarchy, right wing uh, telegram groups. It's because Telegram yeah. doesn't have um, any censorship or doesn't enforce any rules whatsoever. That's why all the crazy people went on Telegram. Yeah, I'm only using it like uh, WhatsApp for like chatting with other people's phones. So let us see these people on the internet. No, uh, don't get me started on anarchy. It's, I, I tr there was a, uh, anarchy does mean chaos. Of course, anarchy means chaos. Everywhere where we have even close things to anarchy, it's absolutely chaos. Not sure if you went into cryptocurrency and stuff already. It's absurd, the amount of scamming chaos, insults, etc. they are. It's absurd. It's an enormous chaos. You think open source is toxic and crazy? Go into... Mm, so it's pretty absurd. I hang up... I hanged out in a lot of cryptocurrency stuff and it's pretty crazy the thing is if you don't have an imposed order even if it's a democratically imposed order you don't have an order it's yeah. like I mean, I'm I'm in favor of de democracy all the way, right? But, for example, you ask an anarchist, how do you solve it? Like, okay, we don't have any judges because that doesn't work with anarchy, right? Because that would be an authority, an established authority, and that we can't have. Exactly. There can no be can be no democracy in an anarch in an anarchic system. Similarly, as there can't be a judge in an anarchic system or any entity taking care of anything. So, if uh, you kill your neighbor's dog by accident by 
driving your car over him by accident it's on your neighbor to define your judgment and if he thinks it's fine to kill your son for it that's it now what I meant with democratic democratic order is still imposed by the democracy right there's like police and judges and all kinds of system that impose the order that was agreed upon by the majority. Yes, small anarcho-socialist communes work on very small scales without any problem. Um, so how do you deal with crime of any sort in any anarcho system? Please tell me you're not an anarcho-capitalist. That would be sad. But how do you avoid outside forces? You're always going to have outside forces. You're always going, going to have groups of people joining themselves together to be more powerful and that's an outside source directly um, let me oh wow the uni is really dark now yeah let me do some magic lightning up here yes okay Th that that's already great news because else <laughs> but yes you know yeah anarcho-capitalism that's like Neo-feudalism, yeah. Th the problem I have with um, anarcho-socialism is I don't see how you can prevent anarcho-capitalism from rising in an anarcho-socialist system. That is, that is my main problem with... with that. Um, more rooms to light up. I mean, the, the, the general idea of, the, the bigger idea of anarcho, the socialist anarchic system is that people are much smarter than trying to kill each other. So they're not going to do that. And the, the kind of things of killing each other is more the anarcho-capitalist system but I still don't see how I still don't see how anarcho-socialism still can oh wow there are so many skeletons up here I still don't see how it can prevent any of these crimes uh, Dim, dim, dim. This here is um, a supercharged crimson steel shovel with lustrous four. It's a silent gems that makes a shovel work. Dim, dim, dim. Um, where do we meet more? I think we're fine now on light bulbs. It was especially this area up here that was spawning lots and lots of skeletons. That should be f fun. Fine, I mean. But yes, uh, I don't see how that could work in generally. Yeah, the, the main problem I have with anarchy is that people are not good people. How did George Carlin said, most chicken are better people than the average person. <laughs> I found that just such a great quote. Yes, 
That's only the, imme uh, the intermediate step that kind of messes that up. I already looked into it, um, like replacing blocks and keeping torches lit, and it's literally not possible. There's so much stuff happening in Minecraft, even if you remove all the flags on placement, it's still going to pop it off. Because it's popped off by an event that is always called. I mean, I completely agree that our democracies are fundamentally flawed at the very moment, at least. But... I don't see a way around democracy and decent sized organization. Like I'm a, I'm a computer scientist that works with distributed systems and very small scale systems work nice for the people in them, like for small um, communist communes for example, but for example organizing things like universities which are high very high level things to do research and research funding and all the resources that are needed for research and research and progress i don't see how that would be easily doable but i'm very open to be taught new new things and have my mind changed just seeing that a lot of these injunctions are actually missing Um <sighs> I don't think there was anyone around the time of Marx that was not a racist in the western world that is Um yet yeah, our our existing democracies are very top heavy and that is because people are too easily manipulated um, although I see that with I see the internet there as a chance although at the moment it's making it easier to mani manipulate people but if we have more transparency and higher levels of education ow what happened and higher levels of education I think the internet is a way you can reform democracy in a decent way. Yeah, I wouldn't say that Mar Marx is for sure against slavery. I think that one that one you you can be absolutely sure about like if it's actual slavery like it was in the United States or the factual slavery that was in Europe where people had to work 80, 60, 70, 80 hour weeks for miserable pay under miserable working conditions, I think that one you can be sure about. Um, I did read a little bit of Marx already, although not a, not a whole lot I have to say. Um, but in general, what I read was more like economic theory. Um, uh, let me drink some water. Always, always gets complex when we talk politics. <laughs> Um. Oh yeah, um, talking like, absolutely, I'm absolutely sure that we are still having in a lot of places factual, factual slavery, yes, 
uh, working in an Amazon pack packaging center or in a chicken factory um, wearing diapers such that you don't need bathroom breaks. If that's not uh, slavery, what is, right? Um, besides, besides animal slavery that is also existing, right? Um, yeah, and then like the entire meat industry is horrifying with all the PTS that people get and all these kinds of things. Yes, I, I think that's like one of the things I'm trying my hardest is trying to find people I disagree with and talk with them. Those people usually <laughs> run away when I start talking with them. But it is something I enjoy a lot because I think everyone everyone benefits from from exchange of information. And I think we have much too hard of a culture of losing an argument. Like there was, I'm not sure who said it, but there was someone who said there is no such thing as a loser in an argument. There's the one who is going to be able to affirm their uh, beliefs and there's going to be a person that is going to learn something new. Then we have two winners in an argument. But we can have two losers in an argument and that's when both people leave the argument the same way they entered. And then you're there, then there's only losers. Yeah, alternative facts, that's one. When I have to, uh, when I argue with my father, that, that gets <laughs> a lot of alternative facts and a lot of gut feeling, a lot of gut feeling in there. Um. Yeah, I have a feeling sometimes that the world is going a little bit in the directly of an idiocracy. But at the same time, I have kind of the hopes uh, of certain parts of the younger generations. However, that heavily depends on the educative systems. Like, unfortunately, you can say yeah. that, for example, in the US, the educative system has failed people heavily, which you can see on the amount of young people starting to be open to believing the world is flat <laughs> that you just mean yeah investment in the educative system is the only way you can save democracy in my opinion or you can the only way you can save any system mm -hmm. besides mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, oppressive systems then you'd want low levels of education Um. <laughs> yes, there there is a lot of of research at the moment in artificially grown cells for meat. As far as I know, I have uh, I read. Yeah, the UK is not much better, unfortunately. As far as I I read, for example, um, KFC is planning. I think it was at the end of this year to have their er first lab-grown chicken McNugget prototype out, for example. And in general, I think in the n next year, I think 2022, a few companies want their first beef out that is lab-grown. So. There is a lot of progress in, in that regard as well. Um, Um, I, th I think 
the most fund fundamental flaw in in democracy I have come to believe is that people think democracy is voting. Hi, Captain Salt. I think that is the, the the main flaw of democracy. Because I I talk with so many people that have like great opinion, like mo a lot of people in our community, and then like at the end of the talk we say like, if you go in politics, I'm going to vote for you. So it's like. And and both sides of the argument know they're not going into politics, but that is exactly the fundamental flaw of it, because smart people with good ideas don't go into politics. <laughs> and a part of the um, democratic system is creating a party if you don't feel represented by existing parties. Of course, there are some democratic systems that are fundamentally flawed by having two party systems like the UK or the United States. And thanks a lot for your third month subscription, Captain Salt, as well. Yeah, voting is the bare minimum, yes. But is it is not what makes democracy democracy. Um, if if a lot more people, uh, intelligent people, were in democracy in politics, I think things would be very different as well. Um, and probably there would be more. There would would be much less of a party game as well. Yeah, at the moment in the UK, you have one party that is. That's very similar to the US as well, where there is like one party and then there is a group of people that is the opposition that joined in the same party. Because there is a two party system, so all people that disagree with the main party have to be together in one party, even though they disagree on a fundamental level on many issues. Yes, people say, I don't like politics, and then they complain about everything, right? Yeah, the, the left is usually... It's similar in the US where Bernie Sanders is heavily undermined by the centrists. Um, one thing that concerns me is a little bit the left-right thinking that we have recently. Like everything at the moment is extreme right and extreme left. And like Bernie Sanders is extreme left even though he is actually more like a slightly left centrist I would say and I don't think there's anyone that is even close to yeah centers is a, a centrist that's standing a little bit left of the center I would say but uh, not significantly left and Biden is right He's definitely a good piece on the, on, the, on the right of the political spectrum. Similar to what Obama was as well, in my opinion. Or Hillary of that. Uh, let's check on our builders again, how they're doing. Okay, university is 44% now. So that's going nicely. I was concerned we would only go to like 40 in the entire stream. Um, she is requesting white banner. Don't we have any white wool in the warehouse anymore? Well, let me check that out. Mm, not sure. Huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> the the left parties in Italy th that is that is an entire different story. That that is just <laughs> that's just comedy. Uh, that that is just literal comedy because they are comedians. <laughs> so, the the party leader is a comedian. <laughs> Yeah, we're out of white wool. Yeah. In most European countries, uh, most Sanders policies would be like... Yeah? <laughs> Obvious? Uh, yeah, five white wool we have. Where are our sheep? They're over here. Do we have a few white ones? Not a lot. So let me get some uh, white dye in the warehouse. Then we dye them all white. And then we do that. Because we're going to need a bunch of white wool. Oh, nice. Those towers are coming along now. Well, that was a big boost now out of the blue. Alright. Um, white dye. Do we have dye? No. So we need bone meal. Yes. Oh, this is this is one of these best things we probably added this year. Is the way to find things in the warehouse. <laughs> it saves so much space. I Um, I don't think that ranked voting is a good idea. Um, if you want to really um, get educated about voting systems, you should check out CGP Gray's video on voting systems. And he breaks down how voting systems should actually be. And I think his two favorites was a two-round two voting system. Or a voting system that is similar, slightly similar to in Ger like it is in Germany. Um, so what you have is a two-phase two system. In the first phase, you would then vote for the for any politician, and then in the second vote, uh, in the second round, then you have two left, and then you vote for the one that the most represents you. That is because ranked voting systems are more, much more complex for people to to do. Um, relatively interesting is also I think it's relatively decently working. And uh, if they would, yeah, it's if you have a system that is slightly similar to in Germany, because basically you got a system that is a direct vote. And then you additionally um, assign seeds on percentages of votes. So that even if a party doesn't win any direct seeds, they can get still a lot of seeds by having like a general percentage of the votes. I think that is something that works relatively good. Because then you can directly vote on those close representatives. But also, if you don't get all the close representatives, you still get a bunch of them by the second vote. But yeah, I, I think, but CGP, uh, CGP Grey, he really made, I think he made like three videos Oh, I have to deliver the wool, you're right. Uh, I think he made around three, four videos on voting systems a bunch of years ago, talking about how the elective si elect uh, the system in the UK... No, it was more. It was like, I think, six, six seven years ago. It was before Brexit. Uh, he made a video about it. I think it was before the Cameron election, even, where he made... No, it was slightly after the Cameron election. Um, where he made a video about it. And 
it is very informative and it shows kind of the different flaws the system have. Um, I remember in Germany they did the simulation these days on like how would the German system be if it was the same voting system as in the US. And I think it was like 70% conservative the seats would be easily. Yeah, <laughs> I think one thing we can definitely agree on is the winner-take-all systems definitely suck the most. <laughs> I think that's an easy one out, yes. Southeast, southeast. Yeah. Let's see. If we find them around here. I think the raid bar, which is going to have the direction as well, is going to be super informative because you don't have to double check the direction. It's going to say it on screen. Yeah. Although what I'm, what I'm doing now is not going to work anymore because they're going to start running all towards the person then the moment you Right, uh, you shot one. Yeah, I, I took it out. <laughs> you took it out? That's uh, waiting. Ah, they're waiting, yes, yes. Don't do that. Wow. Creeper exploding behi behind me. So yeah, the raid bar is going to be pretty nice. Yeah, and you'll be able to see when you got like multiple raids, which one is left from which direction as well. Oh, we got oh, them underground. A bunch of them spawned. Oh, wow. A bunch of them spawned here. That's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, they are coming up our mine now. Yeah, that was kind of unfortunate. Okay, I got a few killed. But there are a bunch of them around the mine, right? Got yeah, the knight ran into the raiders with low health. Okay, we defended. We had. But that. Yeah, I think that was a knight. Night we assigned to to the mine to protect our miner. Ah yes, and so he was trying to get back to the mine top. position. Yeah. Um, so we and did just went into like fifteen barbarians. Yeah, a lot of them. <laughs> that didn't go well for him for sure. Yeah, I thought they were barbarians and not dwarves easy either, but Spawning here underground, that was definitely nasty. Yeah, they're kinda spawning at uh, town hall wide level. Um. Yeah, well, let me check out if that's the, the right one I meant. In the main video I yeah it's one of the it's one of those videos that one is the the walkthrough that is like he has the main video and then he has like two three extras it's one of them yeah it's a large area outside of the colony down there so it's kind of nasty might have to make a small wall there or so 
It's because it's especially bad because half of them spawned underground and ha half of them spawned overground, which made it a little bit more nasty. Even uh, let me dump a few things because I was there overground and then I was like, "Where's the rest?" I wonder why our library student died. Because the library isn't there, and then like it's because maybe they any homes aren't there. yeah. So that's weird. Maybe he was stuck somewhere. Yeah, maybe he was stuck somewhere. Let me see if. Oops. Let me see if that one. Queen Lion is. Yeah, yeah, that one. That's the right video. Yeah, I did uh, throw out my cooked fish on purpose. I want to get more baked potatoes. <laughs> Just request some from our post box. Uh, no, there's a lot in the, at the cook. There's a lot of them in the cook. Okay. There also has a lot as well. So. I'm not sure why our warehouse has so much. Yeah, it's because always the the word the cook gives the workers a little bit more. The workers dump it in their huts, and the demon picks it up. It seems like a bit unnecessary. Yeah, the demon sh is supposed to, the courier is supposed to keep a minimum stock of food in the workers' huts as well. I like demon better. <laughs> the demon because it's so yeah it sounds it's like so demon nice as way. well <laughs> yes demon it's a bit it's because then sam letters thinks he's not the only demon around mine colonies that's why i call our delivery man all demon <laughs> There we go. I was having a, to the earlier task. I was having a, a discussion yesterday with people on Forgecraft as well on on universal basic income and how that would probably be like amazing for modding, for example, etc. Because I believe a lot of modders would then just just be, eh, I don't need money so badly, so I'm going to continue modding instead of getting a boring job or so. But it was also mean probably a lot of people yeah. who work I in the game. More. Huh? What? Sorry, what did I you say? More people could. I, I think more people could like do just what they are, what they like, and other stuff for. Like, like, I seriously, I, I said, if there was universal basic income, I would, I would do modding and research from home and probably do like guest le lecturing at some universities uh, and just spare myself from all yeah, the bureaucracy. No, no one has to bo do boring jobs. That's, that's the entire thing behind it. No one has to do boring jobs. We have machines to do boring jobs. And for the rest of the boring jobs, uh, then we need m uh, monetary incentives uh, for people to make them, of course. Um, nurses should be paid better anyway, right? And they're doing a super hard job. They deserve a much better pay. And the rest of the people in the healthcare industry would then do it because they want to help people. And in, in general, a lot of services, there are a lot of people who like what they're doing. I, I would say the average electrician, for example, or plumber, they like what they're doing as well. I mean, most industry jobs or office jobs can be done by computers, right? Um, things like... Yeah. 
a lot of server things also and like we also have or already have all those self checkout cashiers and these kinds of things and for the remaining things you would have uh, yeah to a certain degree even a big percentage of a doctor's job should be done by a computer because they're better in statistics <laughs> Um, yeah, it's because a doctor's job is to, to, to take symptoms and then assign it to a likely illness, but computers are likely better in that than a doctor. Yeah. So the best thing would be probably be like more a doct, uh, a doctor using computers as an, a, as a tool to more easily treat plain, uh, patients quickly. <laughs> yeah yeah managers don't like automation because then they can't yeah without automation there is no office gossip for people to feel superior to other people in the office yes that is a big problem um but yes there's a lot of stuff like i mean farming is already in a huge percentage done by machines etc anyway um, so that's something a lot of farmer like their jobs as well especially so and for the rest of the things you got monetary incentives right so if there are jobs that are people don't like doing there is always going to be someone who is going to make that job if it's going to give them additional luxury luxury right um, so yes, like there are a lot of people who are fine with uh, having less and those people are going to then do more creative jobs and here and there when they're going to say like, okay, going to do a boring job for a few years to be able to afford a car or I'm going to do a boring job for a few years to afford uh, something additional, that's something there. But it would take a lot of stress out of the society, society as well. There would be much less need for psychological and stress treatments and burnout syndromes and all these kinds of things, right? Yeah, those cost money as well. Yes. The, I have to say, and I'm going to say this again, the university looks glorious at the higher levels and at level four it is looking really glorious i do really like how this looks like yeah it looks nice i mean i i expect it to look great for for that price it's supposed to be stuff it needs. yeah um and now education is a big problem. Um, I think a lot of people become teachers because they enjoy it. Because teacher salaries are not really great to begin with. So I think the future of teaching is actually highly um, computer aided. I think internet is not good enough. I think we do need a place for kids to go. But I think using the computers and um, programs can allow us to individualize the, uh, the learning experience. So you would have kids sitting at, at e-book readers instead of books and kids sitting at computers uh, and the teacher being more there as an additional aid to explain things in additional ways and aid kids if they have problems, etc. Good night, Tinty Todd. See you around. That's how I imagine schools of the future. And kids then can progress at their own individual rate and are not bound. And kids that need additional support can then go into additional classes where they're going to have more teachers there that are going to presentially 
Oh no, this is all publicly funded what I'm talking about. That's all publicly funded what I'm talking about. We already have uh, a lot of computers and all these kinds of things in schools. And... Most kids won't want to learn. Like, I, I'm, I'm very who-so on that one. I think if a kid doesn't want to learn, there, there is a reason yeah. why the kid doesn't want to learn. Because look at kids. Kids going to come to you and going to ask you 50,000 questions. Kids are wanting to learn and know it's things by nature, doing. right? Kids are doing is learning. What, what kids don't like is knowledge that they can't comprehend why they have to do it being shoved into them in a factory-like way. That's what kids don't like. Yes, the, in Germany we have the, the more practical track, yes. Um, where does the money come from? I think we, it, it's like one of these, one of these things I often think, like companies, actually we are giving companies money, right? We are letting companies take our natural resources that belong to all of us, all the coal, all the iron, all the diamonds, all the gold in this, in the, in this and the floor that's yeah. ours that's everyone's um and land is ours it's all ours it's everyone's land only because someone was born with a golden spoon in the mouth they deserve to hold power over hectares and hectares of land no the land belongs to everyone everyone is born on the same planet and the land belongs to everyone so companies are making money on land they usually robbed at some point, right? How much land was just claimed and robbed and stolen and killed for? <laughs> um, no, but like all natural resources. Gold has is not worthless because it's pretty good for some conductors. <laughs> But yes, the, the, the value of gold is the same thing as the value of Bitcoin. It's scarcity. And believing, people believing in the scarcity. Um, that's what I tell people if like, uh, Bitcoin is worthless. Bitcoin is as much worth as a company um, paper uh, as a stock Bitcoin is as much worth as gold or silver um, a bit more s uh, gold I think silver might have a bit more uses um, but definitely more more were uh, as much worth as gold so Uh, fundamentally, I think I think taxing on on uh, on workers is kind of contra incentive, but I think mainly I do like much more progressive tax systems where the additional dollars are taxed and not the past dollars. I think the UK has the same tax system as Germany that sucks that when you go over a certain tax bracket, your taxes increase and you have kind of an incentive to stay under the tax bracket. But I think the US, that's one of the few things the US mostly has is a progressive system. So when you earn over a certain degree, over a certain limit, then that additional earning is taxed with the new tax rate. So that makes much more sense to earn more because what you're earning is going to change the same, but your additional earning is just going to have a little bit more tax percentage on it. Um, I think that works much better. And the US used to have a 90% tax 
on uh, on very high salaries in the past. That was pre Reagan at least. But yeah, I think also the minimum salaries would create a lot of new businesses. Like a lot of people working in restaurants would say, I'm going to open my own restaurant. I don't need a huge profit as long as I have a great job and I have UBI to support myself. People like in the gaming industry where they're super badly treated are going to make their own games instead of working for the companies exploring them. Developers are going to make more open source work instead of working for the companies. I think everyone would profit profit from that. But it, yeah. Yeah, free market is a uh, is an illusion. The European and American wealth was built on suppression of smaller countries and forcing smaller countries to have a free market, while their own markets are heavily regulated from the inside, from the outside. Um, socialist policy fails. I'm still arguing that up to nowadays that I think educate me about that, that there was never socialist policies. The only policies we're having is capitalists trying to have people have the minimum possible with such that they don't start a revolution. I wouldn't say there are any socialist policies. And if the social policies we have are badly thought through. Like I said, like UBI is much better than anything, than the, all the other policies we're having. But in trade, we get half as policies, similar to the taxes. I don't think that we need high taxes on salaries or ta like I would say taxes on salaries up to a reasonable limit are absolutely useless and we should tax the use of land um, and natural resources and the production of waste etc instead of actually taxing workers like I would say for example in Europe I think up to a salary of 2,000 euros there shouldn't be any taxes anything above should be taxed just to be able to create like a social balance such that companies don't pay out themselves too much in salaries to make uh, millions. But in general, the main thing would be about natural resources. North Korea is not socialist. Similarly to as uh, Venezuela, Venezuela is not socialist or uh, Cuba is not socialist. Those, they, those couldn't, or China, those couldn't be farther from socialist ideals. They are all, they are all um, capitalists. That's what they all are. They're all huge market economies that are regulated by the government. Cuba is a bit closer, yes. Cuba is the closest of all of them, that is for sure. But they're still dictatorships. And that use socialism more like a buzzword I have Vietnam it gets a bit closer too yeah but most of these countries they use socialism and communism as a buzzword to manipulate people similar to like they use in the United States capitalism as a buzzword to make people think they live in a in a free land <laughs> meanwhile it's uh, also very close to being an all Oligarchy, oligarchy, I think is the word. Yeah. I think Vietnam is one of the countries I really do not know a lot about, I have to say. 
Um, I don't not know. One of the countries I really like, I do know that uh, Vietnam had a lot of progress in the last decades at least. And one of the countries I do, I'm enjoying increasingly a lot in the past years is Costa Rica. Like besides them not having any military um, and having for being a Caribbean state relatively high standards in terms of education, women's rights, like enormous standards in terms of women's rights, minority rights, animal rights. I think they had recently they started banning a ton of plastic products to avoid pollution um, and I think they just signed something as well to close zoos um, slowly close zoos because of animal exploitation as well <laughs> have fun at your, with your dinner But yeah, even even if we even if we assumed for a second that let's say North Korea and Venezuela are really socialist, we can st we still can't say they are unsuccessful because of the socialism because they're obviously unsuccessful because of the pressure political pressure of the West, right? Like, how could Venezuela be successful with those huge restrictions on trade that they have with the rest of the world, right? The same for North uh, Venezuela, South Korea, North Korea, etc. Cuba. It's, I mean, the US is making sure that those can succeed. even if they were not super corrupt dictatorships where a lot of the money goes into the pockets of a few again I'm going to cut through this here quickly Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that Venezuela, like Venezuela would be for sure much better without the sanctions, but I still think they would have a lot of problems because they do have a lot of corruption and a lot of money goes to the top government officials instead of going to the people who actually need it. So... They did have a revolution uh, before all the sanctions. I do remember that. But uh, Maduro was definitely not a good choice. That I think. Now, yeah, Lula is another of these problems, yeah. I lived some time in Brazil and a lot of the things he made were really great for the people but it's also because he was the first to have the the options to do this actually because at the moment when he took uh, the, pre the presidency the previous president created the Brazilian real that was like the first time in a long time a stable currency for the country and then the moment Lula took leadership um, the oil price boomed a lot and he was able to give out a lot of money however a lot of the things he did actually went also in corruption and uh, all kinds of government hands and there are a lot of state-run companies that are working in the hands of a few etc so it's very complicated uh, in Brazil as well although of course the 
the right is much more destructive than the left in Brazil. That is, I think, something you can be sure about. Absolutely, like... I mean... You can be sure that a bunch of these things... Uh, apartments and stuff he got... He didn't get the right way. Yeah, definitely not socialist. And and then he invented its Olympic games and soccer games stuff that caused even more redistribution and these kinds of things. I mean the prob the main problem of the Latin American countries is the US. There have been a huge amount of coups in the Latin American countries by the US. Um also in Brazil huge amount of government pressure. Um and US influence in elections and all these kinds of things. Um, an entirety of Central America heavily, heavily US influence. And then all that criminality and all the... I think I read these days the statistic that like 50% of the weapons in, uh, Lat in Latin America, in Central America, um, come from the US, are illeg illegally smuggled over the US border and then are used by gangs to dominate the areas. So, yeah. That is some enormous... So you know where all the weapons go where a lot of weapons go. It's because politics are much more complex and the weapon politics in the US is like do not only affect the US, it also means although a lot of these weapons are easily smuggled over the border to Mexican gangs, to Latin American gangs and causing a lot of that misery in that area as well, right? So like the two causes of misery, in, uh, three causes of misery in Latin America destabilization of the uh, American uh, CIA etc against the governments there the number two the drug consumption of the American people um, funding heavily all the gangs and then all the we huge part of the weapons of the gangs come from the US as well so the U.S. can't complain about immigrants at all, from Latin America, at least. Yeah. Um, same thing for Middle East. The U.S. messed up the Middle East to a degree. They should get all those immigrants. All of them. <laughs> no, not all of them, because the... UK and a lot of European countries and Australia are also very very happy in taking that oil so they deserve a huge part of that too <laughs> there's a basement in the archery I'm going to check that out yeah yeah uh, villain and friends are are actually who started it by a huge degree as far as I know no it's actually fine uh, like all the Iran thing was because um, Britain and France were control in control of the Iranian oil and then Iran had their first demo demo democratically elected leader that said that oil is ours which it is <laughs> and then England and France said America help us they want to steal the oil we stole <laughs> And then uh, the uh, CIA staged a coup, which is, by the way, published. 
the only good thing Trump did <laughs> publishing the CIA records that prove that. Yeah, exactly. It, it, exactly. Why are there so many immigrants from from Honduras, Mexico, whatever? It's it's that. And it's the same thing for Europe. It's the same thing. You should like check out what France is especially France is doing in in many African countries. You know that many African countries have their currencies managed by France and then because of that their currencies are tied fixed to a euro such that they can't adjust their currencies on their own such that they are basically then under the power of France still and since that is not enough the European Union forces the African countries to free trade agreements such that Europe can export their uh, garbage products and it's literally garbage products Europe is exporting um, rests of chicken and rests of food that we can't feed to the livestock in Europe that is exported as food to Africa to kind of suppress their um, food industries as well so yeah the mess of Africa is caused by Europe now China is also having a lot of fun with it there as well now Middle East is basically I think a mess up in general I think Europe United States and Russia had a lot of fun in the Middle East <laughs> um, and Asia is also there's a lot of British mis mess up as well in Asia and American Russian mess up as well considering Korea for example yeah I'm not blaming Africa for the investments from China I'm blaming China on it definitely um, something I've been preaching for a long time is I think the best way to to get a country to become democratic and progressive is just to leave them on their own I think they tend to do that but of course if you if you tend to support oppressive regimes by buying their products and supporting their military leaders definitely they're not going to change ever yeah um Oh, let me check how close we're getting to finishing the university. Yes, need to get some more here of this. Then we check how close we're getting. Sixty-nine percent. Only missing decorative items now. So we're getting really close there. Yeah, I think uh, multipolar worlds are essentially better. The problem is that US is currently on the way of fall of Rome. So I'm a little bit concerned of China becoming a sole superpower. That's one of the that's the only thing that I'm really concerned about. I don't I'm not concerned about China becoming powerful because what is making China powerful is the West by using the Chinese slave labor and paying the chi paying Chinese government for it for example um, exporting all these slavery products from China that's how you support the Chinese regime to be oppressive as well Jim de Jim Um, I did forget to welcome Delineator and Princess Cupcakes7 our newest followers to the stream. 
Sorry, I was a bit, little bit too engaged in the chat. <laughs> so... Um, we're getting to the end of the video again. We did get a bunch of things done. As you can see, the fabulous university is almost finished. We're missing a few of placements. Um, yeah. What is, what is now missing in China is basically if the West would stop consuming the products, the system would fall probably stop working as it is and that would cause an uprising that what is like kind of my theory of Ch china um we got the rails finished even the nice rails set up up here that i'm really loving um i do hope you guys enjoyed the um, discussion we had today sometimes we really get really off the far end but i think it's really interesting i really l enjoy hearing all your opinions on these kinds of things. <laughs> We're addicts. We're definitely addicts. <laughs> um, it's especially interesting since we don't do not have as much to do anymore because our colony is pretty much automized. Um, I hope I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. I'm planning to make a little bit of a Forgecraft stream during the day tomorrow. I have some exciting things that I got set up today to show you guys. Um, thanks everyone for engaging as much in the chat as you did today. It was a very interesting discussion, I would say. Thanks, Sam Letters, for being here today, too. Uh, is he still there, Sam Letters? Hi. Yes. <laughs> uh, so thanks Sam Letters for being one here today as well <laughs> All right, cool. uh, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow uh, I hope you enjoyed today's stream uh, if you want to support our modding project you can do so by following, subscribing and becoming a Patreon as well as getting access to our Patreon server um, do not forget that there's going to be a Patreon event server, probably starting next weekend. Um, so don't forget to check in the announcement channel on the Discord server and add your name to the list if you want to per participate. I hope you enjoyed it. I think I said it the fifth time now. Uh, good night, everyone. See you tomorrow.